Okay, so I'm recording this class. So uh, like I said before, you know the drill. If you would like a copy of this class, then I will email it to you uh, later this afternoon after it's been converted. Uh, this is the online class, and the online class focuses on what we used to call the online store. The online store has three main features, and that is the ability to have your customers book their appointments through your website, in other words, online appointments. It also has yeah. the ability for your staff, in other words, you, to check your schedule uh, away from uh, work through your website. And then finally, uh, it also allows your customers to buy gift certificates or product through your website. So we're going to take a look at how that's done. First thing we need to do is set up our online store. And we do that by clicking on this button here that says online. So we're going to click that. And that brings us to our setup online store window. Again, may look a little bit confusing. Don't worry about it. It's really very simple. We're going to uh, go through each one of these fields. The first existing website address, just like before, you're going to put in your business's website address here and make sure that it includes the prefix www or http, whatever it is required make it an actual link. If you don't know what exactly is required for your website, do yourself a favor and visit your website. Go to your website mm -hmm. and just copy the URL and paste it right here. Then it'll put it in properly for you. Next, email address. You do not have to put anything in here. It's not required for this system to work. However, if somebody makes a purchase online, like a retail purchase or books an appointment online, etc., it can be forwarded to you so that you get that information that somebody did that. Now, the reason that's not important, or maybe it is important, but the reason that it's not required is because if somebody books an appointment online, the appointment will be on your appointment book. So it's not like it has to send you an email to let you know that somebody did that uh, in order for you to then book it. Instead, it's simply just a notification that somebody has done this, but the appointment itself is already booked online. Same thing goes with this if somebody purchased a gift certificate or a uh, product online. Again, it can notify you that somebody has done that, but again, if they bought a gift certificate online, they can print it out and come in and use it without you having to have been made aware of it at all because the software is already aware of it and therefore they can print out that gift certificate and come in and use it. And your software will have that gift certificate information inside of it. It knows the value, it knows who bought it, it knows who it was purchased for, etc. cetera. Um, if they buy products, you're going to get a notification in your point of sale that says, hey, an online purchase of product has just been made, and it will even print out a shipping label for you uh, with their address that they want it sent to, along with, of course, everything that they just purchased online. So let's go through the process. After we put in our email address, and oh, excuse me, our website address and our email address, next we've got this big blank white box here that we get to fill in with whatever we like for our terms and conditions. Now, again, you get to write whatever you want. I have chosen to address all three items, appointments, gift certificates, and retail. And by doing so, I've written all purchases of gift certificates or gift cards or products online are final sales. No refunds are available. We require 48 hours advance notice of any cancellation on or rescheduling of an online appointment. And failure to do so may result in a 25% charge. So that's what I've written. You can do anything you'd like there. Um, but again, okay. I'm all three of those items. <clears throat> Next is the bottom message. What is a bottom message? Well, quite literally, it is the little line of text at the very bottom of your online store. So in my case, I just simply wrote Pro Solutions Software Inc. 2011 to 2017, all rights reserved. Now, having said that, you, I've seen before something like, if you have any questions, please call and a telephone number. So again, you get to write whatever you want to appear as the bottom line on the uh, at the bottom of your store. Next, after that, we have our API login and our API transaction key. What is that? You do not need an API login or an API transaction key if you are planning on having your customers book appointments through your website and if you are planning on checking your schedule through your website, but while you're away from the office, obviously, but you are mm. not going to give certificates online or retail online. You only need an API login or an API transaction key if you are in fact selling gift certificates or products online because the API login and transaction key is for the is the ability for your customers to pay online with their credit card so 
you that doesn't by the way that does not mean that you have to go with our preferred provider we would love it if you did we would recommend it if you did because then we know everything works beautifully however you certainly can go with any provider you'd like so you can stick with your credit card company and the API login then is going to be through what's called authorize.net. So you go through your credit card company and get what's called an online merchant ID. Now you might say, well, I've already got a merchant ID with the credit card company that I'm using. No, that's your brick and mortar ID. That's the ID that's used in-house. You can't use the same merchant ID in-house online. There are rules against that. And the reason that they have those rules is because there are higher instances of fraud for online purchases than there are in-house purchases. And that's probably because the physical card is usually present when somebody is doing it in-house. Maybe you even ask them for ID, et cetera, et cetera. But online, of course, it's more anonymous. Now, that doesn't mean that there's a lot of fraud. I'm just saying that there's higher instances of fraud online. Because of that, the credit card companies charge you a higher rate for an online merchant ID. So that's why they don't allow brick and mortar IDs to be used for online purchases. Some businesses say, oh, you know, just type in your credit card information and it sends an email to their shop and in the shop they manually put it into their a brick and mortar ID system. Well, if you do that, you can be blocked from accepting credit cards if the credit card company finds out you're doing that because as far as they're concerned, you're cheating them out of a higher rate. So I want you to be aware that in order to process credit cards online, we use, as a gateway, a company called Authorize.net. And that, now that's not a processing company. This is a gateway, a payment gateway. Mm -hmm. So I'll go here to Authorize.net. So when you go to your credit card company and tell them that you need an online merchant ID and they assign you one, you can then take that online merchant ID to this website and get started. And you will be assigned by authorize.net, an API login, and an API transaction key. You will then be able to plug those in here, and now your customers will be able to buy gift certificates and or product using their credit cards online. So that's what that is. You can leave the blank. You don't need them if you're only using it for appointments online or uh, for you to check your own schedule online. Right. Next. Can I ask you a question about that real quick? Um, I'm, I'm using Vantiv. Will Vantiv take care of that? Um, okay, so are you you're using Vantiv through us then? Yes, because Vantiv yes. is who we. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's our preferred provider. So if all you need to do then is tell us, hey, you know, you can tell someone like me, send me an email, and just say, hey, Matt, uh, I need an online merchant ID from Vantiv, and then I have a, re a representative of Vantiv contact you, and we get it all squared away. Once you've got that okay. online merchant ID from them, then you can go to Authorize.net and set up your account. Okay, so I still have to go through Authorize.net. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. You were thinking, does Vantiv yeah. do that for you? No, no, uh, Authorize.net yeah. has nothing to do with Vantiv. They are a payment gateway. That's kind of like yeah. um, a Verifone machine, you know, that uh, yeah. but put the Vantiv information into the Verifone machine. It's kind of, Verifone okay. is a different company. Well, Authorize.net is a different company. They're not a credit card processing company. They're a payment gateway for, an, for online uh, stores, okay? Okay. And that's... That's what, what our software communicates with is Authorize.net. Company to process your credit cards is whoever you want, and in this case, Vantiv. Okay, um, main image. There are three different images that you get to post up into your store. There is a main image or a top banner. There's another way to think of it. A side mm -hmm. banner image and a bottom banner image. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. This is my online store for my fake company called Bella Renaissance Life Studio. I say fake company because I created it for my sample uh, uh, <laughs> demonstrations. It's not an actual company. However, it's all set up. And as you can see, I have a top banner and a side banner and a bottom banner. And that's what these are. Main image, side banner image, and bottom banner image. Now, the reason we call it the main image rather than the top banner image is because this is what's also going to appear on your gift certificates. Whatever you put here is going to show up on your gift certificates as well. And when people do things like uh, make purchases and they get an email that says, thank you for purchasing with uh, therapy, et cetera, then uh, uh, that will be included on that as well. So it's more than just a top banner. It's a main image. Now, okay. 
Again, as I had said in previous classes, but I'll mention it again, we have a graphic arts department. So we can supply you with the specs so that you can create those images for yourself. Or we are happy to uh, actually work with you to create the images for you, email them to you. Once you've got them on your computer, you can feel free to upload them so that your store will look the way you want it to look. So you've got those three images. Now that we've got our three images in, we're going to choose our main color. The, the main color is the color behind the images. So I've got this kind of um, olive here. And the way to choose or change a main color is simply to click on the box and then choose whatever color you'd like. And if any of these colors don't match precisely what you want, then you can go to define custom colors. And you can type in your RGB codes, or you can choose one of these, like um, let's go with something like this, and then lighten it up a little bit, whatever you want. The point is, is by clicking on this, you will be able to choose a color, which will then put in the color code, and that will then appear behind your imagery. Then we've got our background color. The background color is, for lack of a better term, it's kind of useless, but you'll see this wasted space on the left and wasted space on the right. Now, why do we have so much wasted space? Why do we have this kind of pressed in like this? Well, on a uh, standard computer screen, it's looking like it does now, but on your phone, you don't really see that wasted space. This part of it has been optimized for your smartphone. And that's why it's this shape. That's the way, the way it looks the way it does. But if you're going to be accessing this on a computer like I am right now, uh, we just didn't want to have nothing back here. So we just allow you to, because your customers will be visiting here, we wanted it to look nice. Um, if they're not using their smartphone, they may be doing it through their, um, their, through their computer. And so that's all that is. That's your background color. Then we have our font size. Now, different pages throughout your store, like for instance, your appointments online page is going to have, let me make this a little bigger, it's going to have text that you are going to be putting in here. And that text is going to be a particular color and a particular size. So our font size, the default is three. And we recommend that you leave it at three or possibly four. I like four, it's a little bit bigger, um, but you don't want to get much bigger than four. Don't start throwing in sevens and eights and twelves and things like that. And the reason for that is because you're going to throw off the format. Those will be too large. This is formatted, it is designed for three font. And you can, like I said, you can go with four. I, re I wear reading glasses, <laughs> so I just happen to like four a little bit more. And four doesn't throw off the format. So three or four are your choices in my uh, recommendation. Uh, anything much bigger than that can, might start messing with the format. So three or four. Next, font name. You can use any font you'd like. Uh, the crazier the font, the more difficult it's going to be for your customer to read. Mm -hmm. So we recommend Arial. Arial is the most commonly used font on the internet even more common than Times New Roman, and it is the easiest to read. So we recommend it, and we use it as the default. So Arial is already there for you, and that's what we recommend you leave it as. However, you can, in fact, type in the name of a different font that you have on, installed on your computer. It must be a font that you have installed on your computer. If not, you can't use it. So you might love a font that you found online, but if you haven't downloaded it and installed it on your computer, you can't put the name in here. If you do, okay. nothing will show up because you don't have a valid font. So again, you know, you can go with something else. We recommend Arial. It's already going to be there for you. And trust me, Arial's on your Now, font color. I have chosen black. And the reason I have chosen black is because my main color is light. If my main color was dark, then my font color, I would have wanted to be white or yellow or something like that because you need a contrast between your main color and your font color. If this was a dark purple and my font color was black, it would be exceptionally hard to read. But with having a light background and a black font, it's pretty easy to read. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So after we put in our font color, we have our hyperlink color. Mm -hmm. And our hyperlink color is going to be just that. It is the color of our hyperlinks. Again, there will be hyperlinks throughout. My help is that blue color now. And maybe, you know what, I think that this is actually not really easy to read. I think the Yelp and the lost password there that are still in that kind of 
blue here, I'm going to make that a darker blue. So I'm going to choose that, OK, and save. And I'm going to make my main color a little bit lighter. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Add that to my custom colors. Save. And now let's take a look at that change. Let's refresh. There we go. Ooh, that's ugly. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, um, the fact of the matter is, is that, the, but the help is much easier readable. It's more easy to read, yeah. in my opinion. Okay, so I changed my main color, and I have changed my hyperlink color. Same thing, my previously visited links. All of my links are going to be this color, this blue. But once your customer visits it, it'll change to this burgundy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's what I said is going to happen if they have previously visited it. Mouse over, I said hot pink. You can make it anything you want. But notice when I mouse over, it turns hot pink. It's just mm -hmm. a way to, for you to know, for your customer to know, that that is the hyperlink that they're about to click on. Mm -hmm. OK, then I've got my active hyperlink color, which I just chose as the same as this. Active hyperlink means this is where you are now. That's the active hyperlink, the one that you're in. And then finally, okay. my button colors. And I can choose from blue, red, yellow, green, pink, brown, orange, and black. So you should be able to find one that matches your color scheme. I'm going to change this again, because that is just ugly. And <laughs> I'll just highlight that a little bit, lighten that up. There we go. And refresh. That's a little better. OK, so now, it, when I talk about my button color, these are the button colors I'm talking about. OK. So there are my button colors. And let's come in here. And let's change my button color to, we'll go with red just for the heck of it, so you can see what I'm talking about. Come in here and refresh. And now they're red. OK. Right. So we'll go back in there, change that back to green so that it matches my scheme a little bit better. Save and exit. Refresh. And they're green again. Now. I have now created my storefront. Your storefront is not required. It's important to create it so that it exists, mm -hmm. but it is not required for your customers to see it. In fact, on your website, you might have a button that says, click here to book appointments online. And when they click that, it could take them here, or it could take them directly to this window, which is what you probably want. You could have a button on your website that says, click here to purchase gift certificates. And when they click that button, it could take them here, or it could take them directly here so that they can buy their gift certificate. Yeah. But by creating your storefront, you already have your background colors, your uh, imagery, et cetera, so it looks nice. Now I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to uh, DuncanEdward.com. There we go. This is one of our customers. And I'm going to click on appointments. And so this is theirs. I don't really like theirs yeah. because I think that they're not using the uh, um, parameters, the specs that we gave them very well, um, mm -hmm. kind of misshapen a little bit. But you'll notice that, let's go here, it really is the same thing. Okay, yeah. Let's go to our book now. So here you've got the information, you've got your create free account, you've got the artwork. So this is theirs. This is the artwork that they've chosen. This is their top banner, their side. So I don't think they worked with our graphic arts department. They just did it themselves. Okay. But it's they're ready to go. And of course, their social networking icons are down here. So theirs is ready to go. But you notice how much it looks like their website. This is their yeah. website, and this is their book appointments online. So the point is, is that you should design yours to look as much like your website as possible, just like I yeah. guess they kind of did, but not really feeling theirs. OK, um, let's go back to our online. Don't share this video with anybody, because if Duncan Edward finds out that I just said that about them, they're going to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that we've created our storefront by using this, all of this, we created our storefront. Now uh -huh. we're going to create our appointments online, gift cards or gift certificate sales online, and our retail online. So appointments online, we're going to click this button. 
And by doing so, it opens up this window. This window has its own unique URL right here. That URL where it says appointments URL, there it is. If you have your own website, you could have this URL being used, and that takes them to the store. Or, as I just showed you, the appointments has its own URL. So instead of going to the store, you could turn this into a button so that when your customer clicks on the button to book appointments online, it takes them directly here, which is Great. this screen instead of the front, instead of the, front mm -hmm. of the store. Make sense? Yes. All right. Now we need to actually set up our appointments online so that it is workable for our customers. First things first, the welcome message. Get to write whatever you want to write. I've written, if you have not yet registered or if you have never visited our salon and spa, please be sure to register now. If you have already visited us at least once or if you have already registered, please feel free to log right in, Hunter. Okay, why does it say Hunter? Well, that was because that was just somebody I was training earlier. But there, you see it says Hunter right there. Yeah. So now I'm going to change this, and I'm going to change this to Billy and save. Easy peasy. I'm going to come right back here and refresh. And now it says Billy. Great. So in other words, whatever you write there is going to be immediately available to be seen by your customers. Okay? So... Don't go crazy mm -hmm. with it, because you know whatever you write, once you save, your customers are going to be able to see it. Okay, right. now, after we've written our welcome screen message, we have our confirmation message. When your customer goes through the process of booking themselves an appointment, they're going to get an email. And the first line of that email is going to be whatever you've got here. And in this case, I've written, congratulations, you have successfully booked your appointment online. Then it'll give them all of their information for their appointment. But Great. it's not just an email. When they go through the process, also right there on the screen, they get a confirmation as well. So they don't even have to see their email uh, to know that they successfully did it. Then we've got our cancellation policy. I've said 48 hours advance notice is required or a 25% fee will be charged. You write whatever you want. But that cancellation policy will show up in two different places during the process of booking an appointment. And then under that, we've got show prices. You do not need to show prices. If this is checked blue, your prices will appear next to your services that you allow to be booked online. If mm -hmm. it is gray, your prices will not show. Really simple. Now, hours in advance, what does this mean? You can leave this as a zero, and if you leave it as, zero, as a zero, the client will be able to book within the same hour that they are actually going through the process. In other words, uh, if it was, let's say you open at 9 a.m., and it mm -hmm. is currently 9 a.m., and I went online, and I booked myself an appointment. If that was a zero, I could book myself an appointment for 9.15 or 9.30, mm -hmm. 9.45 perhaps, um, or 9 even, um, which is a little crazy. But if I have a one there, it will advance them a minimum of one hour. So I go to book myself an appointment online, and it happens to be 9 a.m. The first option I will be shown would be 10 a.m. because I've advanced an hour. If I put a three in there and it was 9 a.m., the first option I would be shown would be noon because it advances three hours before it shows them any availabilities. Now, again, mm -hmm. it will only show them that if it is available. So if your 10 o'clock is booked and your 11 o'clock is booked, even though you only have a 1 there, and it's 9 a.m., the first option I would see would still be 12 because your mm -hmm. 10 and 11 are already booked for hours. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's what that hours in advance is. Then we've got okay. max days out. This works just like the hours in advance, but it works on a whole day instead of by the hour. So by having it as a zero, somebody booking this morning could book for this morning or this afternoon or this evening. Whereas if I put a one in there, somebody booking this morning would not be able to book until tomorrow. In other words, they go to book, the first appointment they would be shown would be tomorrow. If I had a two in there, the first appointment they would be able to see would be the day after tomorrow. So it's advancing days. So by leaving it as a zero, they can book on the same day that they're going through the process. Next, cancellation policy. This is the number of hours. Now why do we put that there? your customers will actually have the ability to unbook their own appointments. 
but not if it's within that many hours. I could put 72 there. I could put 480 there if I said, hey, if it's within 10 days of their appointments, they can't okay. unbook, un unbook their appointment. <clears throat> Actually, 48 hours would not be 10 days, would it? I mean, 480 hours, that would be 20 days, wouldn't it? I yeah. So. Yeah, because 240 hours would be 10 days. Yeah. yeah, so 20 days. You know, you could put 480 in there, and then if it's within 20 days, they can't unbook their own appointment. Now, why would you ever do that? Maybe because you don't want your clients unbooking their own appointments. If they need to unbook or reschedule, you want them calling you. Mm -hmm. But if but if that's not the case, you're like, you know, if, it, if it's within three days of their appointment, I'll let them unbook their own appointment. So put in 72 there, and as long as it's within, I mean, outside of 72 hours, they'll be able to unbook their own appointment. Okay, next, booking color. When somebody goes through the process of booking themselves an appointment online, it's going to be a particular colored appointment. I happen to like this bright yellow, but again, just like every other color in here, you get to choose what you want it to be. So I chose this bright, bright yellow, and so when somebody books online, even though you might already have other colors for other services, if it's an appointment that was booked online, it'll be whatever color you chose here. That's a quick and easy way for you to look at your appointment book and see which appointments were booked online. But also, not only that will it have that unique color, it will also have the word web next to it. So it's really impossible to not know okay. that this booked online. It says web and it's a bright yellow in this case. It can be any color you want. And um, and now you know that appointment was booked online. Okay, next, only book on the. And we've got on the hour, on the half hour, quarter hour, 10 minute, or five minute. Now, we recommend hour or half hour as the choices that you give to your customers. Why? Let's say, Billy, that you are available um, tomorrow from 12 to 5. You don't have any appointments at all booked. Maybe somebody, maybe you had a wedding party that was booked, and so you booked it all out, and then they canceled. And so now here okay. you are, and you've got from 12 to 5 wide open tomorrow. And um, if a customer went online to book themselves an appointment tomorrow, and you had it based on the hour, then they would be given 12, 1, 2, 3, and 4 okay. as their options. They wouldn't be given five because mm -hmm. you're closing, but from they would be given those five hours, 12, 1, 2, 3, and 4, as the options available for booking. If you had it on the half hour, they would be given 12, 12, 30, 1, 1, 30, 2, 2, 30, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But if you had it on the quarter hour, so with five hours available, if you have it on the hour, they get five options. On the half hour, 10 options. On the quarter hour, they would get 20 options, maybe that's okay, you know, in a five-hour scheme, you've got 20 options, oh, okay. But on the 10-minute, they're gonna have 30 options. And on the yeah. five-minute, they're gonna have 60 options to choose from for a five-hour gap. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You don't want your customer having to sift through 60 options um, when there's a five-hour gap. So again, we recommend the hour or the half hour. There are certain customers that say, nope, 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 gotta be able to book on the five-minute. Okay, fine, so go ahead. So that's why it's there, because some customers need that. But hour or half hour is our recommendation, just because it makes it cleaner and easier for your customers. And then, of course, quarter hour is another option. Uh, the others, I think, I would just stay away from. Now, yeah. I've selected on the hour. Then we come up here. Now, in this case, it's just going to be you. But the way this works is all of your employees will be listed here. It'll just be Billy. If you put a check next to Billy, Mm -hmm. They will not be able to book appointments online with you because these okay. check marks means you are restricting these employees from being able to be booked online. Okay. So I've said Abigail can be booked, Angie can be booked, but Anna can't. Ashley can and Kathy can. Leslie can't. Lizette can't, etc. So if it's checked, they can't be booked online. If it is unchecked, they can. So you would simply leave yourself unchecked. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Then we've got our groups. You might say, whatever I offer, I want my customers to be able to book them online. Okay, then don't check anything here. Mm -hmm. However, you might also say, you know, there are certain things that require a consultation. I need to talk to this person on the phone before they sit in my chair. Therefore, right. I, if they're going to book that kind of an appointment, they need to call me. Therefore, I don't want them booking it online. So you might have a group of services that you don't allow to be booked online. And if that's the case, you would put a check next to that group. 
in your case, because it's just you, therefore probably only a single group, then you would come here and individual services, rather than groups of services, individual services you could check off and say, those I don't want booked online. But all the others that are left unchecked can be. And of course, you might very well just leave everything unchecked. It's totally up to you. Once you have placed your checkboxes or not, you can then say, save. And Appointments Online is now ready for your customers to use. So let's take a peek. Great. Your customer clicks on the button on your website, and they are either taken to your store or they are taken directly here. Either way, they get to read your message that you've written for them, and I would recommend writing something that makes them understand how to use the system. In other words, something like, if you have never visited me before, then click Create Your Free Account Now. Click. And then they can put in all of their information. True. Also, right here, it says, if you have visited me before, um, register your existing customer profile by clicking here. So if they click there, they can just put in their first name, last name, and their email address. Either way they do it, whether they put in the first name, last name, and email address and hit look up your account, or they put in all of this information and they hit create account, what's going to happen is they are going to be given the opportunity to put in their username and password that they want to use. Okay. So then they get to put in their username and password, and now they can go through the process of logging in. If they have already done that, they never have to do it again. They just put in their username and password. And if they're using it on their smartphone or even on through Google or something like that, it'll ask them if they want to save those so they can say yes. So then the next time they click on the button, they don't even have to do that. They don't even have to put in their username and password. They can just log right in. So the first thing that's going to come up is choose the service group. In your case, it'll probably just be a single group like hair. So they're going to choose the service group. And then from that, they get to choose from a list of all of the services that you offer. So you choose, they're going to choose something like a blow, dry, and curl. And then they'll be given a list of everybody that they get to choose from. In your case, it'll just be you. It'll just say Billy. So okay. they're going to choose the person they want go with Matthew here, and then select a date. And they get to choose, again, from any date they want here. We're going to go with Thursday the 30th here and check available times. Now, remember, I had mine set on the hour. So the available times for Matthew is 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9, 10, 11, 12, and that's it. Those are the available times for Matthew tomorrow. So mm -hmm. we'll go with 10 a.m. for a blow, dry, and curl with Matthew and continue to confirmation. So, below are the services that you have chosen to be scheduled to blow, dry, and curl at 10 a.m. on March 30th, 2017 with Matthew. Now, I can book this appointment, or I can add another service to my cart, or I can wipe it out and start over. Notice, this is my first notification that a 48-hour advance notice is required or a 25% fee will be charged. I'm going to go ahead and book my appointment. And now, your appointment has been booked successfully services that have been scheduled for you, blow, dry, and curl at 10 a.m. on March 30th, 2017, and it knows who it is. So thank you, Bella, for booking with us today. We appreciate your loyalty. And again, the next time that the 48-hour advance notice is there. Make it a little bigger so mm -hmm. you can see it a little better. Well, let's take a look, shall we? Let's go into the actual software, and let's go to the appointment book, and let's go to tomorrow. So here we are, and there's Matthew, and there's 10 a.m., with Bella for a blow dry and curl and as you can see it's bright yellow and it was booked on the web. Yep. So it worked very nicely. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what will happen on your appointment book as well. Your appointment book when you are looking at your week view screen for instance, any appointments that were booked online will be in whatever color you chose with the word web next to them. And it'll be right. quick and easy to see. By the way, you can also run a report that shows you every appointment that was booked online for whatever date range you put in. So you could say, hey, I want to see all the appointments that were booked online last night, or I want to see all the appointments that were booked online last week, or whatever you want. You can do that as well without having to actually look at your appointment book and find them visually. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that part is done now. That's the appointments online, and as you saw, it worked just fine. Now we have another part associated with appointments online, and that's the operator login. So this is for your employee or you. You would click Operator okay. Login from your smartphone, and you would put in your username and your password that you assigned to yourself in the software. 
And by doing that then, it now can, you can show your appointments, book appointments, or log out. So this is now for your staff or you, not for your clients. Mm -hmm. So you click on show appointments, put in a date range. I'll say, um, let's go back to March here. We'll say from March 29th to uh, April 1st and look up appointments. And every appointment that Matthew has will in fact be shown here during that date range, March 30th, 10 a.m. with Bella, it's blow, dry, and curl. And I can unbook this, or I can return to my booking menu. I can look up additional appointments, different date range, et cetera. OK? Mm -hmm. So on your smartphone, on your Apple iPhone, or on your Droid, um, you're going to be able to, when you're at home, and uh, you you know, what do, what do I have tomorrow? Well, the software is installed at, at the uh, at the office. And so you could drive to the office, or you could use one of those third-party remote systems to dial into uh, mm -hmm. your office computer. And But if your office computer is turned off, then you're really out of luck. Um, well, of course, if it's turned off, this isn't going to work either, so never mind. Don't turn it off. Um, but, okay. uh, you know, maybe your internet's down or whatever. But you could also just whip out your smartphone, and you could go to your website, or you could even have a direct icon that takes you right here. Click on it, put in your username and password. Of course, once you've done it the first time, it'll save it. So the next time, you just click on it. It'll take you right here. Put in the dates that you want to look, and boom, you're looking at your schedule for tomorrow or for maybe all of next week or for something like that. Because maybe Darcy mm -hmm. already sent you an email that says, hey, Billy, here are tomorrow's, here's your schedule for tomorrow. So you don't really need that. But maybe you want to see what Saturday looks like before you go making plans with your friends. Mm -hmm. So that's available to you there. So that is the operator. Login. Let's get out of that. Next, we have gift cards or gift certificates online. This is even easier to set up. Click on that. This is all it is, this tiny little window right here. That sets up the whole mm -hmm. thing. First, you could have had gift certificate packages made. I don't know if you do that or right. not. Most people just go with gift certificates that are dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, $50, buck, $50 gift certificate, $100 gift certificate, whatever. Other places say, yeah, we do that, but we also do like a day of beauty gift certificate. It costs you $300, but it's for this service and this service and this service and this service, you know, something right. like that. So if you have a package, great. And if you do, your packages will be listed here, and you can choose them to show online. If you do not, like I don't, they won't be here. But what you can okay. do, in my case, what I like to do, is go with um, dollar amounts. and I can choose any method, method of shipping I want and charge whatever I want for it. So I've got my paper emailed. In other words, you buy a gift certificate online, print it out at home, and walk in and use it. Mm -hmm. Or I have my gift card, USPS First Class. So now I'm saying you bought a gift card. Well, you can't print a gift card out at home. So if you bought a gift card, right. I've got to ship it to you. So I'm going to charge you for first class shipping. And I've got mm -hmm. my card FedEx overnight. So you want a gift card, and you want it now, but um, it's still a card, so you're paying to have it shipped overnight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one. My card FedEx overnight is $20. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to go to my card USPS first class. I'm going to delete that. And my paper emailed. I'm going to delete that. And save and exit. So let's go back in there. I've got no methods of shipping. I'm not set up at all. Mm -hmm. So I can create those methods of shipping. How do I do that? I simply type in a shipping method that I want, like um, email, and then put in my shipping charge for email. I'm not going to charge them. And add. Your shipping charge has been added. Done. Now I'm going to create a new one. FedEx overnight. And my shipping charge for that is going to be $20. And add. And then finally, I'm going to create a last one, and this is going to be Billy Shipping. And that is going to be $25 and add. That's it. I now have three different methods of okay. shipping. Billy shipping, email, mm -hmm. and FedEx overnight. So I'm, whoops, did I save? Yeah, I did. Hmm. Exit out of that. All right, let's take a look. So we go to gift certificates. And here's my form, recipient's first name. Put in my wife and last name, and enter a dollar amount or a gift package. 
I have no gift packages to choose from. So I'm going to enter a dollar amount, 100. I don't need to put in the decimal zero, 00. It's already there for you. So I'm buying my wife a $100 gift certificate. Personal message. If I want, you don't have to have a personal message on it. But if you type a personal message in, when they print it out at home, that personal message will actually be on the gift certificate that has your banner on it and a barcode on it as well and a number. So now, my personal message, congratulations on being married to me. And then I get to choose my shipping terms. And look, I've got email, FedEx overnight, and Billy shipping. Mm -hmm. So you might decide you don't want to go with cards at all and say, I'm going to just go with paper uh, certificates. So you might not have any option other than email. That might be your only yeah. option that you offer your customers. And that's just fine. But so we're going to go with email and please continue. So now I've got a gift certificate recipient, Dina Wiggins, service an amount, gift card or certificate for $100, subtotal $100, shipping zero, total $100. Mm -hmm. I can add another gift certificate to my order or I can proceed. And this is where I put in my credit card information. Choose my okay. credit card type. Put in my card number the CVV, the expiration in the year, first name, last name, etc. All of these are required. That's why those little red dots are there. Mm -hmm. Every one of these, let's make it a little bigger, all of these are required, including their email address. Now, notice, when printing out a certificate, you do not have to fill these fields out. So they don't, this here is not going to be filled out. You would only fill this out if you needed to get a card shipped to you. Okay. So they fill this out and they hit process. And when they hit process, their card is charged. Now, two things happen at that time. When their card is charged, it might be declined, it might be accepted. If it's declined, they get a notice saying your card's been declined. And so they don't get a gift certificate. Or mm -hmm. their card goes through just fine, and they get two things. They get an email that has a receipt for what they just purchased. They also get an email with their gift certificate. I can now okay. forward it to my wife or forward it to my mom or print it out myself, whatever I want. That gift certificate is done. It's nine. I've already paid for it online. Billy doesn't even need to know I did it. I can now walk right into Billy's shop and buy something with my gift certificate. The software okay. is already aware of it. This communicates directly with your software. So when somebody buys something online like a gift certificate, your software is instantly aware of it. And so they can buy it, print it, and walk into your shop and use it. Um, a great story behind that is uh, we have a customer in Phoenix that contacted us to tell us about how one of their customers told them a story that they just loved, which was um, mm. he went to bed at, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night, and um, there he is falling asleep when suddenly he just about has a heart attack. He is woken up with terror, uh, a terror streak in him because as he was falling asleep, he realized tomorrow is his wife's birthday. And uh, he had completely <laughs> forgotten. He had completely forgotten. So in his panic, he ran to the computer. His wife is sleeping in bed, and he's in another room now on the computer. And he's trying to think, what can I do? He's trying, looking for something he could buy her online, realizing mm -hmm. that it's not going to be there for tomorrow, so it's going to look terrible. So um, then he thinks, you know what? There's this salon that she loves. So he thinks, hmm. if I book her an appointment, at least I can show that I did something for her. Maybe they have appointments online. Well, lucky for him, they did. So he went to their salon website, and he booked his wife an appointment online. And they were showing their prices. He saw that it was, I think it's like $75. And I'm making that number up. I don't know if that's part of the story. But about yeah. $75, let's say. And he also thought, you know what? He, she needs to be able to tip as well. So... He, thinking $20 was a decent tip, he booked her an appointment for the $75 service. Then he went to their gift certificate portion, and he bought her a $95 gift certificate so that she would be able to pay for the service and $20 for tip right on the gift certificate. So yeah. he did that, and on the gift certificate, he wrote, happy birthday, blah, 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 printed it out on his color printer that he had at home, very nice color printer, so it had their logo in color on it, mm -hmm. Had every, it even had the message from him, happy birthday, sweetheart. He then took um, a, a piece of paper and on his computer with paint or something like that, he told her that she had an appointment scheduled at this time to get her hair done 
at her favorite salon. He folded that up along with the certificate that was going to take care of that appointment and tip and put it into an envelope, put a little lace on it, and set it down next to the coffee pot that she uses every single morning and then went to bed. Saved his marriage, he told them. Yes. <laughs> no doubt. For real. <laughs> That's right. So he was able to do all of that at 11 o'clock at night while his wife was asleep. When she woke up in the morning and she saw that, it looked like he had actually put some thought into it. Uh -huh. So there really can be, I mean, when you think of things like that, the ability to book appointments online, the ability to buy gift certificates online, the ability to do things like print it out and use it instantly without the company having to be made aware of it, that's all, those are all valuable mm -hmm. tools. And so that's valuable oh, yeah. to you as well, and there you are. That is gift certificates online. Now, let's go back and let's talk about retail online. Perhaps you would like to sell your products through your website as well. Mm -hmm. So click on retail. So here's our setup retail window. It's really very simple. You have product in your system right now, and that mm -hmm. product has a SKU number associated with it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know exactly what it is you want to sell, you can go to your products, and so I'm going to go here and let's uh, look through some of my products here. Okay, so a bunch of unused numbers. Let's find a number. Uh, let's go with my, here we go, 2990. That's my Opie Big Apple Red. So let's put that in there. So I'm going to go to my retail. And I'm going to put my seventh item in here, 2990. So all I need mm -hmm. to do is find my SKU numbers for the products I want to feature because you can put up to 10 products in. Now, I've put in uh, seven of them. In fact, I'm going to mm -hmm. get rid of this one, and I'm going to replace my item number 1130 with it. There we go, because I want just six. So my point yeah. is, is that I have now said these are my six featured items. That doesn't mean they're the only items that can be purchased. It just means these are the first items my customers are going to see. So let's go okay. back over here. Whoops, that's not where I wanted to be. Save. Let's open that store up again. Ooh, that's large. There we go. That here. And let's go back to our retail. Okay, so I've put in my six items. I can put up to 10 in. Then I get to say what my shipping is. Shipping per item. I said is $2.50. So if they buy one product, they're going to get charged $2.50 for shipping. If they buy three products, they're going to charge $7.50. Four products, they're going to get charged okay. $10 for shipping, et cetera, et cetera. Then I come over here. Some of your manufacturers may say you cannot sell our products online. There are manufacturers that are very, very adamant about that because of diversion. I'm sure you're familiar with diversion. Oh, yes. And, yeah, I mean, everybody in the salon industry is, certainly. And so you might have certain manufacturers that say, hey, you can't sell our products online mm -hmm. because of diversion. You can only sell them inside your salon. Well, if that's the case, you're going to put a check next to any manufacturer that doesn't allow their products to be sold online. So there you go. You just check off the ones that won't allow it. Everybody that does allow it, though, can be left unchecked. Then we have our categories of products. And you might say, I don't want my sculpting products to be sold online, so they're checked. I don't want my body products to be sold online, so they're checked. Miscellaneous products, no. But my shampoos, yeah. My finishers, uh-huh. Conditioners, can skincare, yeah. So whatever you want, your categories, unchecked can be sold online, checked cannot. Mm -hmm. Then you can even go lower than that. You know, L'Oreal, which is a gigantic company, and they sell a lot of products through diversion. You know, they, they've got products in Rite Aid and Walgreens, and, but they also have Kerastase products. Those are diversion sensitive. Kerastase products you will find nowhere but in a Kerastase licensed salon. So mm -hmm. L'Oreal might be a manufacturer that you don't check, but you might have to find them. I'll just go with Paul Mitchell here and go through and check off all of their Kerastase products. Because you might say, yeah, I can sell L'Oreal online, I just can't sell their Kerastase products online. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have them checked, you can check off individual products as well to limit those. So there you gotcha. go. 
Once you're done with all of that, you simply hit save and you're done. Your customers can now buy products online and you can use the retail URL so that there's a direct uh, link from your website rather than having to go to the storefront again, like I said before. So let's take a peek. This is what it might look like. And here are my six available products online. And here's my OPI Big Apple Red that I just added mm -hmm. to replace the other one with. So now I've got my age corrected starter kit. Notice there's a picture. Caramel latte. There's a picture. TG Cavalry Boost. But these two don't have them. How do we get pictures right. into the system? In the actual software, if you go to inventory, look up a product, there is a button here that says upload image. Mm -hmm. If you upload an image, it has to be 500K or smaller. If you're using an installed version, you can upload a GIF, a JPEG, a TXT, or a PNG. If it's cloud, just mm -hmm. a JPEG. Browse to wherever it is on your computer and upload it. Now you might say, oh, I don't have a picture of my products. Where am I going to get a picture of my, well, you could use a digital camera, take a picture of it, and copy it to your computer, you could do that. Eh, I don't know if that's really the best idea because it may not look great or it may be an enormously large picture. Most digital cameras take much larger pictures than 500K. Right. But I'm going to come here, for instance, and say uh, Paul Mitchell Awapui and enter and images. Aha. So I found this. Maybe this is the product I want. And mm -hmm. I can go ahead and view that image, right-click on it, and save it right to my computer. So if that's my actual product, maybe it's not, but if it is my actual product, I've just saved it to my computer. And by saving it to my computer, right. I can now browse to it and upload it. And so now it will be available online for my customers to see, just like my TG Cat Root Boost here is, so that your customers can decide, that's what I want, and they can click on that, and or they could go to your different categories or your different manufacturers, et cetera, but no, they chose the TG Cat Root Boost product status, it's in stock. Great. Manufacturers TG, categories finish. And this product is for root coloring treatments and not to be used on oily hair, Hunter. I could change that to Billy, but you already saw how I do it. Yep. Um, so they, this is the product they want. They can add it to their sharp shopping cart. And now it's part of their shopping cart. Now they can continue shopping through the things that you offer online. Or they could go to checkout once they're done. And they can put in their credit card information. And if they want it shipped somewhere else, because they're not buying it for them, they're buying it for their mom or their wife or whatever, and she's on, I don't know, vacation, <laughs> check this box here, yeah. put it in here, and proceed to confirmation. Now it's going to go somewhere else. Now this is the way it works. They just made this purchase online. On your end, Unlike a gift certificate that they can print out and walk right in and use, and you don't need to be made aware of it, right. that doesn't work that way with product. With product, in your software, there will be an alert. It looks like a little planet, and it okay. pops up. And that alert will let you know that an online purchase of retail has just been made. So you can bring your mouse right up to it and click on that alert. And when you do, it opens up a window that has a mailing label that you can print out, as well as exactly what was just purchased online. So now you can grab that product right off your shelf, stick it into your little USPS post office box, and ship it out. Now, you've already charged them for shipping, and because you clicked on that uh, order form, it will also remove your product from your inventory, just as if you had sold it in-house. But you don't have to go through the process of actually processing a transaction because they already bought it online. Mm -hmm. So that's how that works. Now, if you had run out of them and they clicked on that, it would say out of stock and it wouldn't let them purchase it. So okay. if your inventory shows five for my BioSilver Classic Ion, then they're going to be able to buy it. But if it shows negative one for my just an all-in-one shampoo, they're not going to be able to buy it because it's out of stock. Now, you might say, how did I Great. get a negative one? <laughs> you know? Well, negatives are allowed in the software because of this. Um, we used to have it this way. Once the number hit zero, the product couldn't be sold anymore because as far as the software was concerned, you didn't have it. And people mm -hmm. came to us and said, you know what? We sometimes miscount. And 
you know, uh, it, we tell the system we've got 33 of these when we actually had 35 because there were two on the shelf that we didn't count. And so w after we've sold 33, the system says you've got zero and it won't let us sell anymore. Well, I've got two bottles here to sell. I need to be able to sell these. That's ridiculous that the software won't let me sell it. And they're right. So we just said, you know what, we'll allow negative sales. But yeah. that just means that you need to fix your count. But right. <laughs> that's why you might have a negative. But a zero or a negative works the same way for online. If it's a zero or a negative, it will say out of stock, and you cannot buy it online. But you could still walk into the store and buy it if they still had those two that they had found. Um, but uh, hopefully they'll adjust those numbers, and uh, then they would be able to be purchased online if they actually physically have them. That's also a great okay. way, of course, for your customer maybe to contact you and say, I really wanted to buy this, but it says that you're out. And you're like, oh, God, I am out. I need to... <laughs> do my purchase order and order those. So I've heard of our clients do that before too. It's like our clients are keeping a better track of our inventory than we are ever since we right. instituted retail online. So things like that to be aware of. That, Billy, is the class for the online store. Do you have any questions for me at all? And obviously, would you like the uh, recorded meeting? Absolutely. Um, all right. Do you and have any questions? Yeah, uh, how do I get the dimensions for the images? Oh, yeah, okay, that, that's easy as pie right here. Let me just pull up my word here so you can see, actually see it written. I'll make it big. There you go. If you can do your own graphics, then all you need are the specs. So just send an email to graphics at prosolutionssoftware.com and they will send you the specs and you can do it yourself. If Excellent. you would like their help in actually making them, send them an email with maybe your logo, maybe your ideas. Hey, I like waterfalls, I like forests, or I like balloons, whatever. Um, I, or I like just plain solid colors, anything at all. You tell them what you want. They will create different ones for you to look at if you like them. Save them to your computer because they'll email them to you and uh, upload them. If you don't care for them, tell them what changes you want made. But if you just want the specs because you can do it yourself, they'll send you the specs. Wonderful. All right, Matt, thank All you very right. much. I appreciate it's it. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.